Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And on today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a M.2 E-Type Wi-Fi card to a motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to show you how to install a M.2 style Wi-Fi card to a motherboard. Now, you'll probably find there's a lot of motherboards on the market at the moment, which come pretty much like this one. This is the B550 Phantom Gaming 4 from ASRock, and this doesn't come as standard with Wi-Fi built in. There is actually an alternative model, which is about £20 dear, which is the AC model, which comes with the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But if you want to save a few pounds and maybe upgrade a little bit later on, you can do so by picking up one of these boards that doesn't have Wi-Fi, but has an M.2 E type key, which you can then later add a card to. So to know if your board actually supports it, all you need to do is ideally take a look at the motherboard box. And for example, on this particular one, we've got it here, it says M.2 key E for Wi-Fi. Now, if you're not too sure if your motherboard supports the M.2 Wi-Fi modules, then please do let us know in the Discord chat or leave us a comment below and we'll try and work out what it is. But do let us know what motherboard you've got, all those kinds of things, and then we'll see what is suitable for your particular board. But if you're happy that your board does actually have one of these slots and you've picked up a cheapish Wi-Fi card, now this one I picked up from Amazon, this is a very cheap one as you can tell, it's a kind of plain box and I've actually written on most of the details. So this one is actually the Intel AC9260 chipset, which supports up to 1.73 gigabits per second and has both Bluetooth 5.1 and also AC Wi-Fi. So this is going to be pretty good for connecting Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth headsets, or just using Wi-Fi as you would in normal circumstances. So this is based on the PCI Express M.2 slots and is the E-Type. Now this is very important, the actual fingers on the chip itself are in the E format. So if you're not too sure what that is, I'll put some pictures on the screen now so you can see what it actually looks like. And it is actually very slightly different from normal M.2 slots. And physically this won't fit into a normal M.2 slot. So that is one of the limitations that you'll know on the motherboard whether or not you can actually use it. So with all that said, let's see what we actually get inside the package. Now there isn't a great deal because really you don't really need a great deal anyway. So it comes in a little baggie like this and inside we get pretty much the usual deal. So first of all we get two antenna. We get the actual chip itself, which is absolutely tiny. We get a couple of SMA type connectors and the little push fit connectors on the end. So you get two of these on most of the setups for MIMO, which is multi in, multi out. And last of all, we get some fittings. So we get an M.2 screw and also a little retaining plate should you need it for your particular motherboard. I'll put a close up of all this on the screen now so you can see what the whole package looks like together. So the next thing to do is to actually find the slot on your motherboard. Now on this particular board, again, this is the Phantom Gaming 4. These are pretty clearly laid out. So as you can see just there, we've got the one that says M.2 Wi-Fi. Generally, you'll find that it's possibly going to be closer towards the back of the board because it doesn't need a great deal of room and it's limited by space. Also, if you look at the actual mounting holes in front of the M.2 Wi-Fi slot, generally you only have one standoff, possibly two, because there's only actually two real sizes of this. On closer inspection, if you actually take a look closer at the actual M.2 slot, you'll see that the actual notch in the middle is almost in the middle, whereas on your normal Hyper M.2 or PCI Express M.2 slots, you'll find that the actual notch is quite often to the far right or to the far left, depending on how your board's set up. So we've got our Wi-Fi card, we've found our slot on the board, so let's get it installed. Here is a close up of what is actually going on. So there is the M.2 Wi-Fi slot, as you can see. And what we're gonna to need to do is install the card into there and then route the cables for the antenna somewhere along here and going around towards the back to the antenna bracket, which is mounted on the rear IO of the motherboard. Starting off, we've got these connections, which are our SMA type connectors and they terminate at the ends with these absolutely tiny, you probably can barely see them, these are mini SMA connectors, I believe they're called. And these just press onto the actual card itself, which uh, you can just about get, make out in there. There's two connections, which are just in this bottom corner, so they're marked on there, in and out. Now, for me personally, I would say your best bet is to try and connect these cables first of all, before you actually try to install the uh, device. Otherwise, you may find it a little bit difficult or a little bit tricky to actually snap them on. So all we need to do is snap on those two little connectors on the end onto our Wi-Fi card in kind of this area here down the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I will do this off camera because it is actually quite tricky to do and it does require snapping into place. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So there we go. There is the, uh, the two antenna wires connected to the bottom of the card. 
So that section is done. So now all we need to do is to install the card into the M.2 slot. So now you can see there is the M.2 card lined up almost against the slot. And as you can see, there is a small little nodule there. Now what you're gonna to need to do is to remove any plastic coatings which are over the retaining clip, so, or the retaining section. So remove that and take that off. I don't know why they put those on, but I suppose it does have a use. So what you need to do now is to line up the M.2 card with the slot and put it in at a very slight angle, slightly raised, and wiggle it until it feels like it won't go any further. And that is essentially it, very similar to that of a standard M.2 drive. And if we place that down a little bit, you'll notice that you don't need to actually have a spacer because the spacer is already included on the motherboard. Now, obviously, if your board is slightly different, then do use any spacers necessary. Again, if you're not too sure, then please do get in contact with us and we'll try and uh, help you out as best we can. So applying a little bit of pressure onto the top of the M.2 card, line up the screw and gently screw until it makes contact. It doesn't have to be overly tight, just needs to be holding it in place. So once it makes contact, just a tiny little turn on the screwdriver and that will hold it firmly into position. So that is the actual, probably the most difficult part done. So now what we need to do is to route the cables, which are coming out the back here, to our rear IO shield. So looking at this angle, you can see now there's our M.2 card and the cables are coming off. Um, get my hand out of the way. And that is where the antennas were gonna end up. So all you need to do is just route the cables along this back section, along by your VRM. And then on the end, you've just got retention nuts or bolts, whatever you wanna call them. So remove any of the existing bits on there so they're completely empty. And then all you need to do is to pop them through the back plate. And this is, uh, again, relatively straightforward task. So all we need to do now is to put back on the spring washer, which is first of all. So we've got a spring washer first of all, and then we've got another kind of spring washer as well. And then last of all, we've got the, the nut, which goes on the end. So with that in place, just make sure it's nice and firmly tightened up and not gonna wiggle around anywhere. And then repeat the process for the additional antenna. Now you will find that these, because they are actually a bolt on the back and there is like a slot or a channel in there. So you don't need a, any adjustment on the back because it will actually hold it in place, which is actually a nice feature of these ASRock motherboards. So it's nice and easy to do. The washer is really, I suppose you can put in any, uh, any order you like really. It doesn't make a great deal of difference. There's not gonna be a great deal of tension on there kind of finger tight on there. And then that is your two antenna connections ready. Then all you need to do is to get your antenna and twist them on. And you can do that with both of them. To be honest, really, you're probably best off doing this after you've installed the motherboard. But I'm doing this just as demonstration. And then when you're done, you can then obviously angle your antenna any way you wish. So that is it, that's all we needed to do. Now, because these Intel chips, this one is the Intel 9260, I believe it is, and these are actually ready to go for Windows 10. The drivers are actually baked into the operating system, also for Chrome OS, and also for quite a few distributions of Linux as well. You should find that this works straight away. If not, you can get drivers at Intel's website, which I'll put some links in the video description, so you can check those out down there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it. You can obviously, if you want to, make a little bit more effort with your cable management. Do try and make sure that there's uh, nothing really overhanging the GPU slot if at all possible, because obviously you don't want to uh, get your graphics card all tangled up and that kind of stuff. And yeah, most of this isn't gonna look pretty inobtrusive when it's all done and dusted. So that's it. That is how to install your M.2 Wi-Fi card into a motherboard. So there we go, there is the installation all done. And as you can see, we've still got our antenna attached on the back of there. Obviously, if you're putting this into a case, then ideally you wanna remove these uh, just to make installation a little bit easier, unless you're particularly dexterous, in which case you should be absolutely fine. But pretty much a straightforward process, shouldn't take you too long at all. The longest part, in complete honesty, is actually attaching the cables to the M.2 slot. That is very, very fiddly, it is extremely small. So do be careful, make sure you don't damage the actual ports on there. But otherwise, uh, a very straightforward task and will be 
very advantageous if you've got a Wi-Fi signal or maybe you need to access some Bluetooth or you need to wire up some sort of Bluetooth components, speakers, headset, whatever the case may be. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth wise, the limits are endless. So anyway, let's wrap this one up. This has been how to install a M.2 Wi-Fi card onto your motherboard if you haven't got one already. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Happy Thanksgiving.